President Trump explaining his decision to call off secret talks with the Taliban following months of negotiations to hammer out a peace plan in Afghanistan. America has been fighting that war for nearly 20 years. More than 2,000 U.S. service members have been killed and more than 20,000 others wounded with a price tag of roughly $892 billion. So what is the best path forward? For that, we turn to five veterans, all of whom served there. Lindsay Rodman spent eight years on active duty and still serves in the Marine Corps Reserve. William Ruger is an officer in the U.S. Navy Reserve. James Fitzgerald is a nine-year Army veteran. He was injured in Afghanistan as a squad leader with the 101st Airborne. Nate Anderson serves in the Army Special Forces. And Amber Smith served as a helicopter pilot in command and air mission commander in the 101st Airborne Division. Uh, welcome all of you, first of all, and thank you so much for your service to our country. Obviously, this is a very hot topic. All of you have had a personal commitment to this mission. Um, Lindsay, let me start with you. Uh, what did you think of the president's decision, first of all, to sit down with the Taliban and try to negotiate, and secondly, to call that off? Well, I'm actually here representing Iraq and Afghanistan Veterans of America, and as the veteran service organization that represents our cohort, the post-9-11 cohort, it's, it's interesting to see these developments. I don't want to say that the president's uh, decision is good or bad. It's hard to represent veterans as a monolith. Um, we at Iraq and Afghanistan Veterans of America did a poll of our members, and we asked them whether they thought the Afghanistan conflict was worth it. And they said 60% thought it was worth it, 28% thought it was not worth it, significant chunk didn't know. So for us, this is something that raises a lot of conflicting emotions, of and it's a time to reflect on our service and think about what we were able to accomplish in Afghanistan. Yeah. No, regardless I, of I absolutely ended. understand where you're coming from. Speaking of polls, let's look at, at a couple of other numbers. As a jumping off point here, this is a new veterans poll, 58%, uh, this is the one you're referring to, say it is. it was not worth it, 38% say, that it was worth it, and that is a veterans poll, as we just mentioned. How about this other uh, Pew poll? Do you, uh, what do you think of the way that President Trump is handling his duties as commander in chief of the military? 57% approve, 41% disapprove. Um, Amber, where do you stand on the, on the big question here? I think. A withdrawal is long overdue. I think we have to face the reality finally that there is no military solution in Afghanistan. We went into Afghanistan, we accomplished everything we set out to do after 9-11. And where we took a wrong turn is when our military and political leaders shifted towards nation building and establishing this Afghan government that cannot survive on its own without the U.S. dollar and without the United States military. So I think that the outcome in Afghanistan looks the exact same whether we leave tomorrow or whether we leave in 20 years because the Taliban is not going anywhere. Uh, they will continue to fight us if we stay, and they ultimately will resume power once we leave. The only difference is how many more billions of dollars we spend and how many more children have to be raised in this country without their mother or father. So the other day I spoke with General Mattis, and, and he was talking about the fact that in South Korea, for example, we've had forces for a very long time, 40 years. Uh, a similar model has was at work in Germany. Uh, and other places in, in the world as well. Does anybody disagree? Does anybody think that we need to provide a presence there in order to prevent another 9-11? I would say a good deal of Iraq and Afghanistan Veterans of America members believe that the conflict has been worth it and that their service has been worthwhile in Afghanistan. And in that poll that I cited, that was actually our members poll, which are different numbers than the Pew poll. And what's interesting is we've got active duty service members who are responding. So people are just responding, just returning from Afghanistan are saying, hey, I was there yesterday and I thought that my service was worthwhile and what I was doing was important. And that's really important to remember. Yeah, I mean, I disaggregated. I mean, certainly it was worth it to go in in the beginning. We needed to do that after 9-11. It was really important, for example, that we punish the Taliban for supporting al-Qaeda. It was important that we decimate al-Qaeda. It was important that we kill bin Laden. But we accomplished that 
long ago. And so we have to disaggregate it and say, what have we been doing since those times? And is that necessary? And, and like Amber said, the nation building project isn't worth it. It's not necessary for our safety. And that really should be the number one thing we look at. What is necessary for America's security? And what is necessary for America's security isn't to stay in these countries and try to remake them in our image, or even try to make them better, more consistent with our values, because that, again, isn't necessarily for our safety. James, what was your feeling you know, when you were on the ground in terms of of, of how of the potential for Afghanistan becoming a place where it was not possible for terrorists to have a safe haven. Did you did you feel like that was a possible goal? Uh, I absolutely felt like it was a possible idea, a possible goal that we yeah. could achieve as a United States military. Uh, what I feel is lacking is a true guidance for that military. The military is most effective when it's given a clear objective, mm -hmm. uh, and I feel that we don't have that in this case. And I feel that we're also lacking uh, stabilized leadership. Uh, you have many incidents that just exacerbate the situation. We had a uh, long period of time in which we did not have a Secretary of Defense during a time of war, which is unconscionable for our country. Uh, and we still have to deal with kind of the uh, instability uh, inside of certain areas of our government, which does not support our military. So we continue to do a disservice by not giving our military the clear objective that it requires in order to, to do its job effectively. But we also do a disservice to the generations of soldiers that uh, have defended this country by not supporting them in the ways yeah. they require. So Nate, what, what do you think You know, is the response when they watch this back and forth? We're gonna have peace talks with the Taliban, the Taliban is going to you know, eventually uh, have an ability to have some kind of relationship was the hope with the, with the Afghan government and then you know the, the complete pullout from from those discussions I think that the better way to think about it isn't isn't uh, tying together the two issues of a peace process and withdrawal from Afghanistan I think that the two situations can be different conversations you know I think a lot of us served in Afghanistan and probably lost uh, friends and and brothers and sisters in arms and that's what drives me on this issue, is I served with some of the best Americans that I could, you could ever think about meeting. And I want to honor that sacrifice. I think that America wants to honor that sacrifice also. And the, the way that we do that is by, by focusing our resources and, and power towards securing America and also securing the, the things that makes this country great, like the conditions of our prosperity, uh, not by muddling along without a strategy, a coherent strategy in Afghanistan. Does that mean potentially staying there and making sure that it is not, that it doesn't ever become a haven for, you know, I mean, essentially the, the idea is if we, if we pull out, the Taliban is gonna eventually knock over that very fragile government and, and be basically where they were on 9-11. I think the answer to that is based on the question of what, what, what are America's interests in this situation. Like Amber said, I think that we accomplished what we set out to do long ago. We, we decimated Al-Qaeda, we uprooted the Taliban and punished them for harboring Al-Qaeda, and we killed Osama bin Laden. And those are the things that we set out to do and we've done it long ago. It sounds like that is largely the consensus um, at the table, with, uh, with the exception of Lindsay, who understandably represents a lot of veterans and doesn't want to characterize them uh, that way. Um, thank you all for being here today. Uh, your service is invaluable to our country, and everybody who's out there watching this, I know, thanks you and respects you for everything that you've done for our country. Thank you. Good to have you all here tonight. Thank you. Thank you. More of the story coming up.